Almost 12 years ago to the day, a fellow laser enthusiast permanently damaged his right retina with a custom-built high-powered handheld blue laser. As far as the laser hobbyists were concerned, this was the first serious injury in our community. This event took place about a year after the commercialization of the Spider 3 Arctic by Wicked Lasers, which was around the same time that hobbyists realized there was a cheap source of extremely high-powered blue laser parts, more than 200 times more powerful than the laser pointers you can buy at the store. This event changed the way the community saw safety. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about what enabled such a high-powered laser to exist in the first place. A common laser pointer is made with a special electronic component called a laser diode. Without getting too much into the details of semiconductor physics, this diode has a transparent piece shaped like a tiny prism in which light is generated. The front and back of the prism is cleaved so that light can pass through, and the other faces are coated so that all light that hits them is reflected. In doing so, this little piece of the semiconductor becomes a laser cavity. In general, light will bounce all over the place within the semiconductor, but by shaping the cavity so that it's long on one axis and very short on the other axes, standing waves can only form in the long axis, leading to a nice, coherent laser beam out the long end. However, there's a problem. Because some of the light is absorbed every time it reflects, the semiconductor will heat up. This can lead to thermal damage, and so these lasers have an effective upper limit on power output. To avoid this problem, all we have to do is spread out the light. If we make the cavity wider, the light will be absorbed by a bigger area, and thus won't catastrophically fail as easily. The trouble is, by making the cavity wider, standing waves can also form in the transverse direction, i.e. the direction that is not in the out direction. The end result is what is called a multi-mode laser, which has poor beam quality, but potentially very high power output. And that's what the manufacturer of the laser diode used in the story did. They produced one of the first commercially available blue laser diodes specifically to be used in projectors. Projectors don't care about beam quality, and so they could get much better power performance by sacrificing it. Hobbyists, like the fellow who damaged his eye, found that these make for extraordinarily bright laser pointers, even if the beams aren't as narrow as single-mode lasers. And because they're so simple to operate, unlike early high-power laser arrays, we ended up with lots of new hobbyists building dangerous handheld lasers. That was until one of them permanently ruined their vision.